Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I'd also like to introduce Dr. Kelly Reynolds. She is a co-founder with, uh, with myself for the infection, um, or the Healthcare Infection Transmission Systems Consortium. And welcome to Ann Arbor. Uh, I hope that you have a pleasant stay. And you know, I'm really appreciating the, um, the level of travel that many of you have had to go through uh, to come here this week and to spend this time with us. I'd like to thank NSF for hosting our conference and for pro providing us the resources that we've needed to pull this together. Uh, we really appreciated that. And our premier sponsor, Sudexo, thank you for your support. And without question, this could not happen without the collaborative support that we've received from all of our sponsors. It has been um, truthfully overwhelming for us. Um, did not expect this level of support that really helped us to put together something uh, very professional and, uh, and very successful. If you haven't met Savannah Hat yet, I know that you've likely spoke with her on the phone or through email. She's done a phenomenal job keeping this organized, keeping me organized. And if you have an opportunity to see her in the hallway, uh, please you know, tell her thank you, tell her hello. Um, she's, she's really worked pretty hard. And we have a Twitter handle. I, I, it, it's not showing up, but um, it's at Hits Consortium. So feel free to share with the world what we're doing this, this week. So we all know what a healthcare associated infection is, and I'm not gonna give you that lecture. We'll hear a lot of details as we go through the next couple of days. But I think we can agree that it's time to do something different and to think outside that box. We know the associated costs the effect on the quality of care, patient safety, and so on. And this is a complex problem that cannot be solved by one entity. No one per, uh, entity or, or group or organization has found a, um, a, a, a solution to the problem because there is no single simple solution uh, to be had. And the reason is because this is a very complex, multimodal issue. There are multiple sources of contamination, hands, surfaces, water, and air. Multiple avenues of transmission, ingestion, inhalation, direct, indirect transmission. Multiple risk factors, right? So uh, the overall health of the patient, whether they have diabetes, underlying, uh, underlying com conditions, smoking, other behaviors. And other very important contributing factors such as surgery, invasive devices, catheterization, so on. And when it comes to intervention, there are so many very successful uh, solutions that have been implemented, but they often target only one or two of the uh, important contributing factors to healthcare associated infections. They often fail to take into account factors <clears throat> that affect its success, such as human behavior, the context of the environment in which it's being implemented. So often it's just simply not implementable. Or the solution is not sustainable. It's too expensive. It's resource intensive. It's too complex to be implemented. Or the solution is simply just not effective. It is, does not actually accomplish what it was set out to do because the focus was on keeping it affordable keeping it simple, and so you've compromised other aspects of what might be a successful program, and it is no longer accomplishing the goal that it was intended. So this brings us to the HITS Consortium. We are a collaborative effort that connects researchers, experts, healthcare professionals from across disciplines, all of, all of whom, such as yourselves, who are committed to reducing healthcare-associated infections. And so we are promoting public health through the integration of best practices that concern the four following major pathogen transmission pathways, water, surfaces, air, and hands, or direct transmission. And the HITS platform does take a different approach. Come on, darling, there we go. It looks holistically at the sources of contamination, the mechanisms of spread, and the context of the problem. A holistic approach cannot just look at the sources of contamination. We also need to consider the areas 
where those con where the contamination is coming from, the departments, the people in those departments in healthcare. Um, these include facilities management, physicians, nurses, infection prevention, and environmental services, or EVS. This also includes our research partners, because everything that is implemented, all of our policies are data-driven. And it includes our industry partners, because without our industry partners, without manufacturing, without that, that, sources, that source of innovation, where would we be? The point also is that the burden of healthcare associated infections, the burden of this problem, should not rely, on the sh rely solely on the shoulders of one organization. It is a, a very multimodal issue with multiple conti uh, contributing factors, and so um, <laughs> with multiple transmission pathways. And so only truly can we make a change is if we come together with, through a collaborative effort. We have reached out globally to experts in the field, and you are going to hear from 27 of them this week. Super excited and very, very proud of the leaders that we have been able to bring together today in this room. You will hear from them as they share with you their experiences, their ideas, and what they think is the future for changing up the system. Over the next two days, you will experience an interactive teamwork, engaging in interdisciplinary learning, and have the opportunity to share with others your innovative ideas, your ideas for, for, progr for pro progress. And the fact that you are here, the fact that you took the time to join with us this week is a testament to your leadership in this space and your commitment to change. And so I'd like to, uh, give Kelly um, the podium to discuss what we're going to do. Yes, thank you, Chris. Whoops, I don't mean to push you off of the stage here. <laughs> I wanted to just talk with you a little bit about uh, what our goals are for this meeting and make sure we're aligned in what we're trying to accomplish here. A couple of years ago, we gathered a small group of, of experts and kind of local professionals in infection control at the University of Arizona and just really start thinking about the larger meeting we needed to have, which is what is happening today. Chris and I started talking over a year ago about how to shape a meeting where we can bring more people together. And it was really out of some of my experience where you go to the large infection control conferences, you give your talk, and then at the end there's a couple of people who hang around and wanna ask you questions, and you have these one-on-one -on -one conversations, but when do we all get in the same room and talk about our collective efforts, or our individual expertise? This is that time. This is that same room that we are all gathered in. And that's our goal for this meeting. We want to gain new understandings of infection control challenges. We all have multidisciplinary perspectives here, and we're trying to bring that together. At the same time, this meeting is really what Chris and I envisioned. And so we also want your feedback on other things that you envision that can improve this meeting or drive the process that we're trying to achieve. Ultimately, and I've talked with a lot of you in this room about this, we need a paradigm shift. What's, what we've been doing in terms of infection control, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like we've leveled off a little bit. We've seen some improvements and some things getting worse. We see new uh, surgeons of antibiotic resistant bacteria um, and just other new emerging pathogens. So it seems like for every achievement we make, we also have a bit of a setback. And so we need some new approaches, new innovation in technology and research and in application. And that's where we're hoping this meeting can help drive articulating research needs for the future and influencing funding opportunities. A, a meeting such as this can have a voice with NIH or AHRQ or different funding agencies about what we as the experts in this field believe should be the next focus for research. And so we're hoping to work together in a collaborative group in a, a similar voice to drive those kinds of research initiatives. So what to expect? a fast-paced meeting. We have a packed schedule for you. If you look at the agenda, there's just things keep hopping this entire two days. And we have a lot of information we want to share with you. And we absolutely want to make sure we set aside time to get feedback from you. So if you haven't figured it out from 
from the schedule, we are having every meal together, which is going to be great. So there's an opportunity for some casual networking and also for some more formal structured workshop kind of efforts. So uh, if I just want to point out, I think it's in your packet, although I haven't gotten my goodie bag yet, but uh, there's this worksheet here that will solicit your feedback. And we're hoping that during the sessions, during the speaker events, you'll be writing down some of your thoughts um, on how you might contribute to the conversation, questions you may have, but really what your perspective is. If you don't have the opportunity to get up on the stage and, and tell your story, your perspective, put it down on these sheets. So we'll have an opportunity to discuss your feedback during the breakout work groups. Oh, they don't have it yet? Okay, it'll be on the tables then in, in the work groups. And so hopefully we can get some of those handed out to you during the sessions too so you can take some notes. But take your own notes and then we'll have these worksheets. We also want to collect these from you at the end of the day so that we can use your feedback to help improve the next meeting or inform what work groups could be doing throughout this next year. So if you also haven't figured out, we don't want this to be a meeting where we share information and then we go back to our own offices and we do our thing for the next year and maybe see you at next year's meeting. We want this to turn into active work groups, collaborative partnerships, strategic partnerships, where we go after funding together, where we work together on a multidisciplinary team to address some of these issues we've identified. So I'm really hoping to identify more of you in this room that I can collaborate with on research proposals and, and research in general. So I have a quote here um, by an unknown author, but I really like it. And it says, the first step towards getting somewhere is to decide that you are not going to stay where you are. And I think that's just sort of a good thing to keep in mind for this meeting, that we are going to share information, not stay where we are, but really bring forth some innovative discovery. So the other thing I want to do in terms of what happens after the meeting, I really want to give a shout out to uh, Michael Diamond, who's standing up in the room there. I think he's the one that kind of keeps everything organized for us, but he's done a lot of the promotions for this conference and he's with infectioncontrol.tips. After the conference, ic.tips is going to help us put together some information blasts in a variety of different ways. They could be white papers, podcasts, um, just different report updates, maybe Maybe he'll tweet for us. I don't tweet, so I'm a little bit old school on that. My kids all do, but uh, he taught you how. Okay, I'm going to need my own private session to learn how to tweet here. I've done it before, but it's, I haven't adapted it as a routine. So anyhow, we're going to try and get more information out to keep people engaged and to draw more people to our group. Uh, one of the things I put down, one of the things that we, um, oh, that's an example of the worksheet. That's what that looks like. So one of the things I want to also stress is what your role is. And Chris already touched on this. We don't want you to be a passive participant. You've been invited here or solicited to come here um, because we want to hear your voice. And so please do share your unique perspectives, network with each other. We had a great event last night, the pre-meeting mixer. I know some of you couldn't make it, but boy, it was really impressive to see the room mingling and mixing and people talking. And it seemed like a lot of us were old friends in there. And I know some of them were, were new acquaintances. So we want to continue building those partnerships and continue to have you engage post-meeting. Complete your workshop worksheets. We really want that feedback and information. There will also be a post-conference survey. And that's kind of one of those, what do you like the best? What do you like the least? What suggestions do you have? Rate scale of one to five. So you'll be getting that, a 10-minute kind of survey. But that's different than these worksheets. We really want the worksheets to be a little bit more of a detailed assessment of, of what your thoughts are with this meeting and driving this agenda forward. And invite others. We know there's, there's people not at the table currently. We know there are more people maybe in C-suite management that need to be at the table. And we hope they'll be at the next year's meeting, but also during this next year, let's see if we can get those people engaged. Um, and this is your meeting. Uh, Chris and I put this together because we thought there was a real need in our field. And we just want you to make the most of this meeting and, and really just kind of jump in there and realize that we're doing this for you. We're doing this for the field. And we're very, very excited that you're here. So thank you again. I look forward to talking more with, with all of you in the next couple of days. So uh, we have some, oh, here they come. So Jesse Miller has the uh, worksheets, uh, did I say sheets? Worksheets for each of the sessions. And you, you feel free to fill out as many as you need. 
Um, you may or may not want to put your name on them. That's up to you. But we will, we will collab, um, collect all of this information. And at the end of uh, each day, we do have the workshop, as Kelly mentioned. Um, and we'll have a, a group leader is identified for each of these workshops. So we'll take all that information, try to correlate it, and come back at, uh, at, before we go to um, dinner tonight with the five you know, bullet points. But a much more detailed report will be coming out. If you look at your badge, and in the bottom left-hand corner of your badge, there's a number, or a letter, A, B, C, or D. And that puts you in a work group. And uh, we, we structured the work group so that we would, um, A, not have everybody from one. If, if, you're, if you have uh, three representatives from your company, each of the three of you can be in a different work group. And um, that there is a um, homo or heterogeneous mix of individuals from healthcare, um, uh, industry, as, and academia, so that there, it should be a very interdisciplinary. Because again, remember, one of the one of the points is to not be in silos. We want to try to break those silos and have that um, interdisciplinary approach. So, please, um, when we break out to uh, our, our sessions, you know what group you're going to be. We'll announce your group leader and we will take you to the, to the respective room. I think group A stays in this room here, okay?